Hey family, welcome back to the bus channel. Uh, we haven't got the bus home yet. The weather is not cooperating, but we're thinking here in a couple of days, it's gonna be nice to get it home. My friend Tyler is gonna help me get it here. So, meanwhile, we've been thinking about the Gia and uh, getting it ready for the summertime. So I thought, well, let's get the blankets off the Gia. get it out and get it ready for spring. Um, some of the maintenance things are the same with the bus. They are both have a 1600 engine, uh, 68 and 69 uh, bus had a single port intake, but um, otherwise it's the same. This is a 71, so it's a dual port. After 71, they started making the motors bigger and adding carbs and doing all kinds of things to get them more horsepower. But the uh, engine that's in the 71 Kia and the 68, uh, bus are virtually the same. Some of the things we have to do on a routine is with the oil changes, um, set the points, the timing, and we're going to do a valve adjustment. So that'll be fun and it'll be pretty much the same exact procedure as it would be on the bus. I know I haven't shown you much around the Carmagia. If you guys would like to see that, I think later when the sun comes out in the spring, um, maybe we can do a full tour of the Carmagia. For you on this channel um, if you think that'd be fun let me know um, meanwhile we just stick to the engine maintenance stuff and one thing that's going to be different on the gear is we get the custom exhaust and that's going to have to come down because it is in the way of doing the valve adjustment <laughs> This is specific to my Karma Gia. So if you're interested in the valve adjustment, um, you can skip forward and uh, try to make a, uh, a highlight in the video for that part. This is not in the manual. All right, we get that out of the way. We'll, uh, we have it out. We'll put a fresh coat of high temp paint on it. This brings back memories of all the things that have gone down in this tiny little garage. The whole common gear.
Okay, when we do the valve adjustment, we're going to be turning the motor over by hand. So, uh, it would make it a lot easier to turn if we pull the spark plugs. And since it's really not that much of a trouble, we should do that and go ahead and check what the spark plugs look like. Double check the gap. Spark plugs really don't need to be that tight. The torque spec is 25 foot pounds. And they, they shouldn't be very tight. Gently scrape a little bit, get the char off. Never use a wire brush on spark plugs. It um, the bristles can wreck the electrode. And once you got each one of them clean, let's check the gap. The gap on this is 0.024 inch. which is the same as 0.6 millimeter for the plug. When you're checking your gap, move the feeler around a little bit because you have to be angled just right. It might seem like it's stiff until you have it just right. If it needs to be opened up, they make a tool for that, but the main thing is not to be prying against the electrode when you're setting the gap. But you want it to be right there, just right. Okay, so we've got all our spark plugs out. Should make the motor easier to turn over. We're gonna look inside the Distributor cap. Get this over out of the way. As long as we're here, let's go ahead and check the points. Pull the rotor off. There's four high points on the distributor shaft. And the little heel right here that the points ride on this high point on the distributor shaft. So we want it to be right on top of that. We turn the motor a little bit, and there's a little bit of play in the shaft you can do because of the vacuum advance. Make sure that's as far onto the high point as you can get it. Okay, when we've got that right, 0.16, same as 0.4 millimeters. To fit right down in there, between the points. The tolerance is 0.16 to 0.2 of an inch. <clears throat> Again, when you have your feeler gauge, you want to be able to move it so that there's no drag, it's not touching or being pinched. But it's very easy to be off kilter and it feels like it's sticking. So move it around a little bit and make sure that it's actually going between. See, just right it should be where it's not dragging and that is the right amount of point gap. It needs to be regularly tested because 
this little heel that rides along the lobes can wear out, the points can wear out, and the spring can wear out. So you want to check that uh, on your periodic maintenance. All right, so we've got our plugs checked and our points gapped. And we're going to put the rotor back on here because it's going to help us determine what cylinder we're going to be doing the valve adjustment on. Okay, there's a little mark right here on the edge of the distributor. And that's supposed to be top dead center when it's pointing at cylinder number one. Hard for you guys to see, but you can feel it with your thumbnail. We're going to turn the motor until it's pointed right at that. And that should be top dead center. And I have installed this way cool pulley on a uh, gear. And it actually has a little TDC marking there for top dead center. So now we know we are top dead center and cylinder number one is ready to fire so we're going to check the valves on cylinder number one the clearance is 0 0.006 inch uh, this is the number one cylinder this is number two this is the front of the car this is the rear of the car on the right side passenger side so cylinder number one is a top dead center so should be the most slack that you have in the valves. And we're gonna put the feeler gauge right in this spot between the valve and the end of the push rod tapper and see if we've got the right clearance. But the first thing to do is to wiggle each of these push rods and see what kind of lash there is. And you want it all the way in, obviously when we're checking the gap. This one is hard to get. The feeler gauge is tight in there, but you can see where there is a gap there. And the lash feels like that. The feeler gauge goes in. I've got some drag there so if anything those might be a little tight but there's some lash to it so if this is a little tight what I do is loosen this nut and use this slot with my screwdriver to adjust the tightness let's advance the motor counterclockwise to the number two cylinder be 90 degrees from where we just were and on the way cool pulley there's a little marker where we know where we're there and we're gonna go double check the next one the number two cylinder and the first thing we want to do is check the lash And we got one with a lot more here. Let's check the gap. The, the inner valves are the intake valves and the outer ones would be the exhaust valve. So this is the exhaust valve with number two and it is quite a bit looser than the others with uh, extra lash there so we're going to adjust it very simple hope you can see i'm going to loosen the lock nut
loosen the lock nut, finally got that freed up, and then use the screw here to set the lash. And I'll tighten it first, and then I'll double check the clearance. Slight amount of drag on the feeler gauge. You can see it moves about the same as the other one. These little adjusters that push on the valve are replaceable and sometimes they do wear the end of the valve which it's pushing on can get curved or concave worn and these um, little adjuster bolts can get a rounded head on them so that even though there's the right amount of flash the feeler gauge doesn't seem to want to slide in between because it's worn to a cup and ball so the remedy is these screws are replaceable and there's uh, caps that go on top of the valve um, if you've got a, a the end of the valve is worn out. So you could take all these out and put caps on the end of the valves and have a nice flat surface. Um, meanwhile, the regular backyard way is to just check when you've got a good one about how much looseness there is or lash and try to have that equal so even if you've got a cup and ball wear problem and you can't get your feeler gauge in there you can still adjust the valves to a workable amount by matching the lash on both of them so this side is done Now we're working on the driver's side. The front is cylinder number three. Snappy. The way you can tell the the dual port motor from the earlier single port is on the intake manifold right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it splits into two and the head is different too. It's got uh, ports ready to take this um, <clears throat> bifurcated intake pipe and yeah that's what it's called just a fancy way of saying it splits in two and uh, 
the single port intake goes into the head and gets split up inside there, bifurcated if you will. Yeah, who designed this? Oh, wait. I did. Okay. It looks cool. Fully functional and completely unnecessary. That's my motto. want the engine oil hot uh, when you take it out that way all the yuckies are stuck inside which also means all this exhaust and everything is really nice and hot to burn your hands on You also want the engine up full operating temperature when you check the timing, um, which you saw me doing. Five degrees past top dead center on the 71, slightly different on the 68, 69, and 70. Those you set right at top dead center after blocking off the vacuum advance. You can certainly add a oil filter but this one doesn't have one obviously an upgraded oil strainer that I have on the Kia not necessary just fun Uh, debris. I'll we'll have to investigate what that is. Okay. The oil strainer down off of those studs. Here's another gasket. On top of the strainer. Alright, we got the gear all ready for spraying. 
got the oil changed and set the points and plugs and especially we did the valve adjustment. If you came here to watch that tutorial, I hope it was helpful. I uh, hope you hit a like, it really helped me. Um, next video, we're gonna go pick up the bus. So now the Ghia is ready to go outside and make room. I'm really hoping we can get the bus in here. If not, we'll be working on it in the driveway, but uh, it's not too much bigger than a Karma Ghia, so we'll see if she'll fit in. And I'll see you back here then. I hope you come back. Hope you subscribe and hit the like for me. For today, that's all. Thank you.